Hello, I'm Doug Waples. In this video, I'll show you two simple methods for converting any set of kerogen kinetics data, that is an A factor and an activation energy distribution, into any other uh, new set of kinetics data with a user-selected A factor and a correspondingly adjusted activation energy distribution. This procedure is often of considerable value in working with kerogen kinetics data. Of the two methods available, the one you select will depend partly on your personal preferences and partly on the type of data you have available. I'll describe both methods in this video. Suppose that after much searching, you finally found some kinetic data, like the ones in this table, for a kerogen that you want to use in a modeling study. However, the A factor provided for the kerogen is 1.21 E15 per second, a value that seems to you to be too high. You don't want to throw the data away because you don't have a good replacement for them. But you also know the dangers of using kinetics where the A factor and activation energies are either too high or too low. So, what do you do? There's a good solution to this all too common problem. In fact, there are two possible solutions, and I'll present both of them here. With either of these methods, you can convert the existing kinetics data into values that will work better in your modeling and increase your confidence in the results of your work. In the first method, you only need the original A factor that you want to change and the original activation energy distribution, as shown here. This method must be used if you don't have the original digital pyrolysis data that were used to generate the original kinetics. You'll use this method for published kinetic data or for any other kinetic data where you don't have access to the original pyrolysis data. The methods I'll show you depend on the compensation effect which states that there are an infinite number of solutions to the problem of finding a combination of an A factor and an activation energy distribution that fit laboratory pyrolysis data. The compensation effect creates problems for us in deriving kinetics, but it turns out to be a useful tool for converting one A factor to another. For each activation energy, Ea, in the activation energy distribution, there's a reaction rate constant K whose value is calculated using the Arrhenius equation, shown here. R is a constant, and T is the absolute reaction temperature in Kelvin, not Celsius. Here I've generalized the equation so that it is valid for any individual Ea value in the activation energy distribution. Although I've also subscripted A, for any given set of kinetics data, A is always assumed to be the same for all values of Ea. Let's assume that we want to change the published A factor on the earlier slide from 1.21 E15 per second to some other value, say 7 E13. We begin by recognizing that the original kinetics and the new kinetics must both fit the same pyrolysis data, and that the compensation effect will allow us to state explicitly the equivalence between the reaction rate constants determined using both A factors. Let's take 1.21 E15 as A1 and 7 E13 as A2. The designations 1 and 2 also apply to the reaction rate constant and each activation energy. Here, let's just focus on the first Ea value in the original activation energy distribution, which in the table highlighted in yellow is 52 kilocalories per mole. We'll call it Ea11. The compensation effect tells us that K1 equals K2, 
and thus that the corresponding Arrhenius formulations must also be equal. It's important to recognize that the temperature T is the same in both cases because it's a same pyrolysis experiment. Only the methods of interpreting the pyrolysis data have changed. Recall that we know EA11 from the published data, 52 kilocalories in this case, and we know both A1 and A2. We also know the gas constant and the temperature T. But in fact, how do we know the temperature? In the pyrolysis experiment, temperature was increasing at the rate of about 25 C per minute. Which temperature do we use in the Arrhenius equation? My solution is simple and it works very well. I use the same temperature in all such calculations because the results are not very sensitive to a change in T of a few degrees. The temperature I use is 474 C, which is equivalent to a T max value of 435 C. This temperature is the actual reaction temperature during or close to peak generation in the great majority of the immature carrogens we work with. I haven't had any problems in using that temperature over the whole range of activation energies. Rearranging our K1 equals K2 equation and simplifying a little using algebra, we get the series of equations shown here. The final result is that because we decreased A from its original value of 1.21 E15, we must also decrease each EA in the activation energy distribution, in this case by 4.23 kilocalories per mole. To repeat, the amount of increase or decrease in EA is the same for each activation energy in the distribution. Note that we had to divide the normal value of R by a thousand in order to work in kilocalories rather than calories. This method is easy because the setup and calculations can be done in Excel and because no new lab analyses or manipulation of pyrograms is required. As a result, kinetics from any source, such as reports or publications, can be converted to whatever A factor one wishes. Kinetics modified in this way will give results that are slightly different in format, but fully compatible with those converted in the second way, which I'll discuss next. Before we move on, however, let's look at the final set of converted kinetics in this table. The A factor is now 7E13, and each EA value in the original table has been reduced by 4.23 kilocalories per mole. The quantities associated with the new EA values have not been changed. When plotted in histogram form, the new non-integral activation energies on the x-axis look a little odd, but these values will give the correct results during modeling calculations. As a very good rule of thumb, a doubling of A will result in an increase in the EA of 1.029 kilocalories per mole, and a halving of A will decrease EA by the same amount. Thus, a change from A equals 1E14 to 8E14 would result in an increase in each activation energy of about 3.09 kilocalories per mole. A change in A of an order of magnitude will result in a change in EA of about 3.42 kilocalories per mole. In summary, this method is quick, easy, and accurate. Its only minor disadvantage is that EA values will seldom turn out to be integers. The alternative method for adjusting source rock kinetics is to reprocess the original pyrolysis data using the desired A factor. This method requires that you have the digital pyrolysis data and that you have software capable of extracting kinetics from a single pyrolysis run or multiple pyrolysis runs. There is no difference in the accuracy of the reprocessing method 
compared to the adjustment method I just described. But there may be some convenience in being able to force the activation energies to be integers. The main disadvantages of the reprocessing method are that one must have both the digital data and access to appropriate software. This method normally cannot be used to change the A factor in published data or data taken from reports because of the absence of digital pyrolysis data. However, it may be applicable to some sets of archive pyrolysis data as well as to new data. The digital data sometimes accompany the pyrograms themselves. If they aren't provided automatically, the laboratories should be able to give them to you if you request them. The necessary data are found in three columns, often together with other columns of data, such as CO2, that aren't important for hydrocarbon generation kinetics. The three required columns for each data point are time, which is sometimes in minutes, as in this example, and sometimes in seconds, temperature, in degrees C, representing the true oven temperature, and the hydrocarbon yield, in this case called FID. The units and name for the yield data are not important, as values taken from the yield column will be normalized later anyway. There may be more than a thousand points in some data sets. Here we see activation energy distributions obtained using our ORFA software from a single pyrolysis run processed using three different A factors. EA spacing was set to one kilocalorie for all three. A factors are 1E13, 1E14, and 1E15. Vertical and horizontal scales are the same on all three plots. All three sets of kinetic data fit the pyrolysis data equally well, but they definitely won't give identical results in basin modeling under cooler geologic conditions. In summary, I've presented two methods to convert the A factors and activation energy distributions for source rock kinetics. One method requires only the existing A factor and activation energy distribution and involves some simple algebra. This method can be used for any data set. The second method requires access to the original digital pyrolysis data and special software that will extract kinetics from the pyrolysis data using any desired A factor. The first method is less expensive, quicker, more general, and requires less data. The only advantages of the second method may be a perception of greater accuracy and the ability to work with integral activation energies. Both methods yield accurate results that are equally valid. Thanks for watching. I hope this video will be useful for you in your work.